Thank you, Jesus. You are our cornerstone. And today we are here as weak vessels waiting to be made strong. Through the storm and through every type of wind, we see you, Lord, as our Lord and Lord of all. And therefore today, Lord, we commit this service to you. And we ask you to minister to us. And we ask you to minister to us. And to change us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before, my name is Pastor Steve Thuku. For those who are visiting us for the very first time. Together with my wife, Miss Jennifer, we pastor this church. We don't pride ourselves in pastoring the church. We pride ourselves in being in his presence. Hawajivuni kuwa wa chungaji, lakini wanajivunia kuwa katika uwepo wa mungu. Come on, church. I want you to help me uh, welcome the minister of the word today. A dear friend and a leader in this house today. And I'm so happy to see leaders coming up. Last Sunday, Martin Barawa. My goodness. I was watching on I was watching live service and I felt like answering the altar call and coming in front. This guy was preaching like a man fighting bees. It was a word in season. Amen. Hallelujah. How many were Amen. blessed last Sunday? Today Amen. you are going to be blessed even more. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and help me welcome brother Shukrani Dominic as he comes Amen. to minister Amen. to us. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's appreciate this man. He's a leader in the house and a son together with his wife. Amen. Yeye ni kiongozi na pia ni mwana wa nyumbani pamoja na mke wake. Ashakuwa daktari ama bado. Tunaelekea hapo. So we start addressing you as Dr. Shukrani. Dominic Shukrani, not medicine, of course. All right, Sasa. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, shall we rise in honor of the word of God? Tusmame tukiweza kwa heshima ya neno la mungu. We shall read from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 4, verse 5 through 8. Twende pamoja katika kitabu cha... Timotheo wa pili uh, Let's read together from uh, the NIV version It says, yeah. let's start But you, keep your head in all situations Endure hardship Do the work of an evangelist Discharge all the duties of your ministry For I am already being poured out like a drink offering and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now they store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. Not to only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. Bali wewe uwe na kiasi katika mambo yote vumilia mabaya fanya kazi ya muhubiri wa injili timiliza huduma yako kwa maana mimi sasa na miminwa na wakati wa kufariki kwangu umefika nimevipiga vita vilivyo vizuri mwendo nimeumaliza imani nimeilinda baada ya hayo nimewekewa taji ya haki ambayo bwana muhukumu Mwenye haki atanipa siku ile wala si mimi tu bali na watu wote pia waliopenda kufunuliwa kwake. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Mnaweza kuketi. I'd like us to go to uh, the word of God. Twende katika neno la Mungu. And see that which God has in store for us. Na tukaweze kuona ni nini mungu wanacho kwa ajili yetu. Uh, before we dwell into the word of God, I want us to look at a certain analogy. Na kabla tuingie katika neno la mungu, nataka tukangalie mfano. I want us uh, to ponder on this. Ili tukaweze kuweka misingi katika hileo. 
that uh, different countries in the world are known for different things. Na inchi nyingi duniani hujulikana kwa mambo maalum. For instance, we have our country, beloved country Kenya. Na kwa mfano inchi yetu ya Kenya, it's known for producing the best marathoners. Na inafahamika inatoa wale wakimbiaji masafa marefu wazuri. Uh, we have football coming from Brazil and probably Germany. Tukona mpira wa miguu kutoka Brazil na Ujerumani. So different people and places are known for different things. Na inchi nyingi na mahali kwingi hufahamika kwa mambo maalum. I want us to dwell in the field of athletics. Nataka tukaweze kuweka macho yetu katika uh, uwanja wa riadha. Because all of us here we are from uh, Tokyo. Uh, marathon kwa maana sote tulikuwa kule uh, Tokyo mbio za masafa marefu and in the field of athletics we have Eliud Kipchoge who is a marathoner na pia tuna mkimbiaji Kipchoge ambaye ni mkimbiaji mbio za masafa marefu and we used to have Usain Bolt from Jamaica the 100 meter dash man na tulikuwa na yule mkimbiaji kutoka Jamaica now, i want us to look at these two people at distinct characters nataka tukaweze kuangalia hawa watu wawili na tabia zao that kipchoge is a marathoner kwamba yeye kipchoge ni mkimbiaji masafa marefu and usain bolt is a 100 meter dash person na bolt yeye ni mkimbiaji wa masafa mafupi and they are all champions na wote ni washindi however hata hivyo it's very interesting ni ya kusisimua that kipchoge would lose terrible kwamba Kipchoge anaweza kupoteza vibaya sana if he chose to run the race designed for Usain Bolt. Ya kwamba akiamua kukimbia mbio za masafa marefu pamoja na Bolt and the vice versa is equally true. Na hata Bolt pia angepoteza kienda masafa marefu. However, hata hivyo both are champions and we celebrate them today. Wote ni washindi na tunawashangilia leo because they purposefully selected their race kwa maana wao katika mbio zao ni wazuri and went the rigorous required prerequisite wao walipitia yale mafunzo magumu in building their muscles uh, and on the day of the race na kwa kufanyia kazi misuli kwa siku ile ya mbio they endured it all and ran their race respectively to a successful na completion na siku hiyo ya kukimbia walivumilia yote na kuwa washindi in this world katika ulimwengu huu as human beings kama mwanadamu we are always in a race sisi daima tuko mbioni it is a lifetime race na hizi ni mbio zinazo kwa, kwa uhai wetu wote tukiwa hapa duniani it is either we are in a race to heaven pengine tuko mbioni kuelekea mbinguni or we are in a race to hell ama tuko mbioni kwenda kuzimu and you cannot participate in both na pia hauwezi kushiriki kwa zote as we have seen in our earlier examples na ha, kama vile tumeona katika mifano yetu miwili when we got saved tulipo okolewa we kind of jumped ship kwa hivyo tulitoka mahali and it denounced the world and its all affections na tukakataa njia za ulimwengu and purpose to walk to take our cross and walk with Christ. Na tukakusudia kuchukua msalaba wetu kwenda na Kristo. And follow Jesus. Na kumfuata Kristo. Now this is where we drew the line. Na hapo ndipo tuliweka mipaka and chose a different race from the one we were used to. Na hapo ndipo tulifanya uchaguzi wa kukimbia mbio. Friends, marafiki wangu, I want to minister to us today nataka niwaletee neno leo the word of god neno la mungu uh, entitled run and finish your race like never before wewe piga mbio zako vile haujawahi na umalize mwendo run and finish your race like never before piga na umalize mbio zako vile haujawahi i want us to ponder and learn a few lessons nataka tujifundishe mafunzo fulani which will keep us in this race to heaven ya ambayo itatufanya tukaweze kusimama katika hizi mbio za mbinguni from uh, the verse of scripture where we have initially read 
na kutoka kile kifungu ambacho tumesoma so we will go slowly by slowly kwa hivyo tutaenda pole pole and it reduce some lessons from second timothy chapter number 4 Uh, we will dwell here so that we can get the characteristics of someone who is running his race like never before ili tukaweze kupata tabia za yule mtu anayepiga mbio vile hajawahi from the life and character of the apostle paul ili kujifundisha kutoka maisha ya paulo Verse five says but you keep your head in all situations and your hardship do the work of an evangelist discharge all the duties of your ministry bali wewe uwe na kiasi katika mambo yote vumilia mabaya fanya kazi ya mhubiri na injili timiliza huduma yako the first lesson we want us to learn is be you must be disciplined jambo la kwanza tunaojifundisha ni uwe na nidhamu for you to be able to run your race Like never before you must be disciplined. Ili ukaweze kupiga mbio zako vile haujawahi ni uwe mwenye nidhamu. Being disciplined, uwe mwenye nidhamu. In other words, we are saying be you and do you. Ili uwe wewe na ufanye wewe. Do not be counterfeit. Usikue mtu bandia. Do not take everything in just like that. Usichukue tu jambo lolote. The Bible says test every spirit. Biblia inasema jaribu kila roho we shall be able to know what you've been eating by what will be coming out of you na tutafahamu ni nini umekuwa ukila na kuangalia matokeo but the bible records that biblia inasema out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks kutoka vilindi vya moyo kinywa hunena so if you have been feeding evil kama umekuwa ukila uovu then evil will be coming out na uovu utatoka nje if you have been feeding gossip kwamba umekuwa kila masengenyo then gossip shall come out of you kwa hivyo masengenyo yatadhihirika if you've been feeding envy and pride na kama umekuwa ukila kiburi then those uh, acts of the flesh shall be coming out of you na matendo ya mwili yatadhihirika or if you've been feeding the word of god kama umekuwa ukila neno la mungu it will equally be evident na pia hilo litadhihirika na discipline calls you to stay on your lane na nidhamu ni sababu hukufanya ukaze kuwa katika laini yako discipline calls you to stay on your lane na nidhamu hukufanya ukaweze kuwa mbioni katika laini yako the analogy that we are using all the marathoners or the 100 meter dash they must be on their lane na wale wapigi, wapigaji mbio ni lazima wawe katika laini yao. And here in church na hapa kanisani we also uh, for you to be able to run and finish your race you must be in your lane. Na ili ukaweze kupiga mbio ni lazima ukaweze kuwa laini yako. For instance kwa mfano we have our beautiful singers here. Tuko na waimbaji wetu wazuri. Wairimo sings so nicely. Wairimo huimba vizuri. And we have Boni here does the drums so well. Na Boni hucheza ngoma vizuri. Now if Boni thinks that he can take the mic and sing Na because he does Boni the drums so well. Na microphone aimbe. We all know what will be the outcome. Na tutajua ni nini kitatendeka. Amen. Amen. So discipline also calls on contentedness na nidhamu pia hu ni uwe umetosheka be content with what you have ili utosheke na kile ulicho nacho for you to be able to run your race ili ukaweze kupiga mbio zako you have to avoid instant gratification na ukaweze kujiepusha na kutosheka mara hiyo hiyo our today's generation amen our today's generation katika kizazi chetu cha leo We are really suffering from this instant gratification. Na tunajipata tukiwa katika hii hali ya kutosheka vitu kwa haraka. And as a result, na kutokana na hiyo, we mess up. Tunakosea. We leave our race. Tunaacha mbio zetu. And join another person's race. Na tunaweza kuungana na mwingine akipiga mbio zake. And the end result is na mwisho you will not finish that race. Hautamaliza hizo mbio. Because it is not meant for you. Kwa maana hiyo sio sehemu yako. Kipchoge can run 42 kilometers. 
Kipchoge anapiga mbio za kilomita 42. But he will be number last in only a 100 meter dash. Lakini atakuwa wa mwisho katika mbio za mita 100. Be contented and stay in your lane. Wewe tosheka na ubaki katika line yako. Amen. Amen. Remember this. Kumbuka hii. It is always greener on the other side of the fence. Kwamba kule kwingine kunaonekana ni kuzuri zaidi. Nonetheless, Nonetheless, Hata hivyo, be disciplined and contented enough. Kuwa mwenye nidhamu na ukaweze kutosheka and run your race. Na upige mbio zako. Because they will not tell you about the green snakes abounding in those green grasses. Na kwa maana hawatakufahamisha kile kilisababisha kuonekane kuzuri kule. Let's go to the second lesson. Twende katika somo la pili. And this is in verse 6. Tutari wa sita. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering and the time has come for my departure. Kwa maana mimi sasa ninamiminwa na wakati wa kufariki kwangu umefika. For you to run your race and finish like never before. Kwa ili ukaweze kupiga mbio zako kama vile haujawahi. You go to understand your season and timings. Ni kaufahamu majira yako na nyakati. Paul says here for I am already being poured out. Paulo anasema sasa nimemiminwa like a drink offering kama dhabihu uh, at the time for my departure is at hand. Na wakati wa kufariki kwangu umekaribia. He is aware of his timing and season na amefahamu majira na nyakati zake and the point in time where he is in his race na amefikia wakati gani katika mbio zake now friends marafiki wangu the bible says there is time and season for everything na biblia inasema kuna nyakati za kila kitu there is time to gather and there is time to scatter kuna wakati wa kusanya na wakutawanya there is a season and timings for everything na kuna majira ya kila kitu for instance kwa mfano, are you a student? Wewe ni mwanafunzi? Then behave like a student. Kuwa kama mwanafunzi. Pastor said it here. Mchungaji amesema hapa, I am a PhD finance student. Yeye anafanya shahada ya PhD and I got all the time to behave like a student. Na wakati mwingi ni lazima aishi kama mwanafunzi. And remain in that category before I cross over the other side na mpaka abaki katika hicho kiwango mpaka avuke i cannot pretend to have already graduated and be a doctor or a professor and yet i'm still in the process hawezi kujifanya kwamba amehitimu na bado are you single je haujaoleka then behave like a single person kuwa kama mtu hajaoleka are you married je umeoa then be like a married person kuwa kama mtu aliyeoa na kuoleka are you saved Je, wewe umeokoka? Then friend. Then friends, you go to behave like a saved person. Kwa hivyo ni lazima ukue na tabia za mtu aliyeokoka. You don't have to behave to fit in in a certain cocoon. Haina haja ukaweze kuingiliana na tabia za watu wengine. Understand your timings and your seasons. Kwa hivyo ni lazima ukaweze kuelewa majira na nyakati. Brethren, wapendwa, it's high time that we go to understand this ni wakati tukaweze kufahamu hii understand our season and accept our timings tukaweze kufahamu majira yetu na kukubali nyakati no season is permanent hakuna majira yaliyo yanakaa yanadumu the beautiful butterfly that we see today na yale kipepeo uh, unaoaona leo was once a caterpillar kwanza walikuwa katika hiyo hali yao ya kiwavi the bible records that Biblia inatuambia as long as the hair is still young elimradi uh, yule mrithi bado ni mtoto mdogo the estate will always remain in the hands of the advocate ya kwamba ile himaya yake itabaki katika mikono ya wakili but when he's grown up anapokuwa then he can claim that inheritance kwa hivyo anaweza ku tisha ule urithi wake so don't go ahead while you are young start claiming your inheritance Wacha kuita urithi wako kiwa bado wewe ni mtoto. You will spoil it. Utaiharibu. And the Bible records this also. Biblia inatuambia hivi that while you were young, kwamba mkiwa wachanga, you used to take milk. 
Mlikuwa mnakunywa maziwa. And now when you are grown up, na sasa mmekuwa watu wazima, you go to take solid foods. Nenda ukakule mifupa. It's very interesting. Ni ya kushangaza that you were grown up but you want to take milk. Kwamba wewe umekuwa na bado unataka kunywa maziwa. You will be malnourished. Kwa wewe utakosa afya. Because you need solid food. Kwa maana unahitaji chakula kizito. And if you are young and you need the solid food. Na kama bado ni mchanga na unakula chakula kizito. You will constipate. Uta, utaanza kujaza hewa. So watch out my brother. Kwa hivyo kuwa mwangalifu. It's lest you be malnourished or you constipate. Ili usiweze kukosa na kuwa na utapia mlo ama kujaza hewa. For you to run your race. Ili ukaweze kupiga mbio zako. Then understand your timings and your season. Jifundishe kujua nyakati na majira yako. You may be broke today. Naweza kuwa hauna hela leo. But that's not your destiny. Hapo sio hatima yako. Do not live a life of a lie. So as to please your friends. Usiishi maisha ya uongo ili ukaweze kupendeza marafiki. Be true to yourself. Wewe ukaweze kujikubali. And do not fall and appear pressure. Na usijipate katika msukumo wa marafiki. If your friend got married. Kwa marafiki yako ameolewa. Wait for your time. Ngoja wakati wako. If your friend graduated. Kwa marafiki yako amehitimu. Wait for your time. Subiri wakati wako. If you, your friend is driving. Let's not suffer. Let's wait our time. Wacha tusubiri wakati wetu. Let's pray for them. Wacha tuombe and bless them. Wacha tuabariki. If your friend prospers before you, kwamba rafiki yako kifanikiwa kabla yako. Thank the Lord and bless the Lord for him. Washukuru na ubariki mungu kwa jili yao. Be contented and wait for your time. We weto sheka na subiri wakati wako. Because they will surely come. Kwa mana hakika utafika. Call upon the Lord and wait for your time. Ita jina la buana na usubiri wakati wako. Because your time and season will come. Kwa mana wakati na majira yako utafika. Let's go to verse 7 and learn the third lesson. Tuende mstari wa saba na tujifundishe somo letu la tatu. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Nime vipiga vita vilivyo vizuri mwendo nimeumaliza na imani nimeilinda. Amen. I love the Swahili version. You can repeat it again. Mstari wa 7, nime vipiga vita vilivyo vizuri mwendo nimeumaliza imani nimeilinda. There used to be a song from that one. Was, nime vipiga vita nime vipiga vita vilivyo vizuri mwendo nimeumaliza. Imani nimeilinda mwendo nimeumaliza imani nimeilinda It's a beautiful Amen. song Amen. So uh, friends marafiki wangu uh, the third lesson is fight a good fight piga vita vilivyo vizuri finish the race maliza mwendo and keep your faith. Now we imani. Now as you purpose to run your race to a successful Na completion. Mafanikio, be determined to keep wewe your faith. Kuwa, be determined to keep your faith. Kulinda imani yako. Be determined to keep your faith. Kuwa na ya kulinda imani yako. And this faith. Na wakati huu, this faith. Na imani hii, Let me tell you, is in this context, this faith is a person. Na hii imani ni mtu katika hii hali. Paul, uh, in his epistle, preaches repentance towards God. Yeye anahubiri uh, toba kurudi kwa mungu. And faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Na imani kwa Yesu, we, uh, Yesu Christo buwana wetu. In other words, when we were still in sin, Kwa maneno mengine tukiwa katika dhambi bado we used to think that god was not for us tulidhani ya kwamba mungu hatupendi that's why when jesus came iposa yesu alipokuja his blood reconciled us to god damu yake eturudisha kwa mungu therefore for you to remain in that consciousness of repentance towards god ili ukaweze kubaki katika hiyo dhamira ya mungu you have to be always conscious of the blood which is uniting you to God. Therefore, when we say fight a good fight, finish the race and keep your faith, we are like saying, 
get hold of this man Jesus Christ ni kusema pata huyu Yesu Kristo get hold of Jesus Christ along the way mpate Yesu Kristo ukiwa njiani because as you proceed with the journey of salvation tunapoendelea na safari ya wokovu you may experience various hurdles utaenda kupata vizingiti vingi distractors and negative energy and vibes zinazo kusukuma nyuma Let's look at Matthew chapter number 6. Matthew, Matthew chapter 11 verse 6. Matayo 11:6. It says and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Mstari wa 6. Na yeheri awaye yote asiye chukizwa nami. Amen. Uh, the Bible says and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Amebarikiwa au heri yule mtu asiyekwazwa nami. So in this journey, kwa katika hii safari, you may experience all those what have measured up there. Unaweza kukumbana na hayo yote ambayo nimeyataja hapo awali and may come to a point that you feel like you are offended by this god na ufike mahali unasikia kukwazwa na huyu mungu i feel like you do not want to continue serving him na ujihisi kama hutaki kuendelea kumtumikia yes i know for so long nafahamu kwa muda mrefu you have been singing so well you've been singing to god so well umekuwa ukiimba vizuri mbele ya mungu yes i know that you have been compassionate to the less fortunate for so long and yes i know that you have supported the works of ministry for so long and you are wondering lakini sasa unashangaa you've been doing all this umekuwa ukitenda haya yote and yet god is not coming to your rescue na kwamba mungu haonekani you may you want to reach that point of getting offended by the work of the ministry unaweza kufika mahali unasikia kukwazwa na neno la Mungu the bible is encouraging us today biblia inatutia moyo leo as we run our race to a successful completion tunapopiga mbio zetu kumaliza tukifanikiwa let's remember matthew 11:6 wacha tukumbuke masayo 11:6 that blessed is he who is not offended because of me heri awaye yote asiyechukizwa nami because because the kingdom of god ufalme wa mungu is not a butter trade or a betting company ya kwamba yeye si kampuni ya kucheza ubashiri where you do this so that you can get that unafanya hivi ili ukaweze kupata ile in this kingdom of his dear son na kwamba katika ufalme everything has been provided for kila kitu kimetoshelezwa for the bible records kwamba biblia inasema greater love has no man than this kwamba hakuna mtu mkuu kuliko hii that he laid his life down for his friends kwamba anaweka uhai wake chini kwa sababu ya marafiki therefore here is the bottom line kwa hivyo hapa ndio msingi of the whole matter which will help us to run our race and not get offended ya kile ambacho kitatufanya tupige mbio bila kukwazwa let's look at psalms 24 verse 1 twende zaburi ya 24 the bible says the earth and the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein enchi na vyote vijazavyo ni mali ya bwana dunia na wote wakao ndani yake so friends marafiki wangu if we come to this realization tukifika na kugundua hii and revelation kwamba haufunuo and comprehend that everything including ourselves are lord is ya kwamba tukaweze kutambua na kufahamu ya kwamba kila kitu then as we run our race and serve the lord tunapopiga mbio na kutumikia mungu we will not get offended kwamba hatutakwazwa we will give our resources and including ourselves tutakabidhi mali yetu na pamoja nasi wenyewe and serve him na kumtumikia and that way na hivyo we will be running our race tutapiga mbio zetu to reach to a successful completion ili tukaweze kufika hatuma iliyo bora like never before vile hatujawahi Let's look at the final uh, lesson that we want to learn today. Twende katika somo la mwisho la leo. 
Let's go back to our main scripture reference, verses 8. It says, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So friends, the fourth lesson I want us to learn today is that let us run expectantly. As we run, let us have that bigger picture in our mind. We should be uh, mindful of the ultimate accolade from God himself on that day when he will be wiping our tears on the other side of the flood and welcoming us home saying this beautiful accolade well done good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant, you have done well. Enter the rest and the joy of your Lord. This is our ultimate accolade that we are all looking forward. Uh, we are not getting saved to get vehicles. Uh, uh, we are not getting saved to get plots and pieces of parcels uh, of land. But this, the Bible says in, in Matthew that, but seek ye the kingdom of God first. And his righteousness. And all these shall be added unto you. So friends, our main focus will be towards serving the Lord. And looking forward to that beautiful accolade on that day. When we shall be welcomed home. When we shall be welcomed home by God himself. Then these material things will just find us along the way as we serve God. Friends, I may not know what is weighing you down so easily today. Such that you want to quit and avoid running your race to a successful completion. And you are avoiding to run expectantly. You started so well. When you got saved. Let's look at Galatians 3, uh, 3 as we finalize. Are you so foolish after beginning with the spirit? Are you now trying to attain your goal by human efforts? Why do you want to finish by means of flesh when you started by means of spirit. You are a good singer. You enjoyed giving and supporting ministry. Why now? You enjoyed comforting and being there for others. Why now? You enjoyed going out and reaching out to the unreached. Why now? You enjoyed fasting. And this reminds us that our three day fasting as a church, uh, the first three days of every month starts this Wednesday and will end on Friday. You enjoyed doing that. Why now? Where is the zeal and the enthusiasm which you had when we started? 
Iko wapi ile ari na nguvu uliyokuwa nayo kiasi All the fire is dead Mbona moto umezimika You enjoyed attending cell services Ulipenda sana kwenda nyumba ushirika wa Why now Mbona sasa You enjoyed serving the Lord Ulipenda sana kumtumikia Mungu Why now Mbona sasa Friends Rafiki Serving God is a marathon is not a 100 meter dash Kumtumikia Mungu ni mbio za masafa marefu wala si mafupi You can imagine after one hour of running Unaweza kufikiria nini baada ya saa moja ukipiga mbio And still Kipchoge could not even see the finishing line Na bado haoni mwisho But he chose to be there Lakini aliendelea hivyo Uh, serving God is not an instant gratification affair. Na Mungu kumtumikia Mungu si kitu kinatimilika kwa haraka vile tunataka. It is a marathon. Hiyo ni mbio za masafa. Therefore we got to exercise our muscles every day. Na hivyo tufanye mazoezi kila siku. And the way we will exercise our muscles every day is by reading the word of God. Na hiyo ni kutokana na kusoma neno la Mungu. For the Bible is profitable for doctrine. Na kwa maana neno la Mungu ni la mafundisho mazuri for reproof and for correction na kwamba inaweza kuturudi so that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished ili mtu wa Mungu akaweze uh, kuwa na manufaa you want to be thoroughly furnished and run your race like never before nataka kufanywa kazi vizuri na upige mbio zako feed yourself the word of God nenda ukajidishe neno la Mungu be found in the right congregation Neno kaweze kujipata mahali palipo sawa. Be faithful to grow under somebody. Nenda ukaweze kuwa mwaminifu. And take that moment and learn. Na ukaweze kuchukua hiyo fursa na ujifundishe. For you to be able to grow. Ili ukaweze kukua. And as you serve God. Na unapotumikia Mungu. Let us be like Paul here. Wacha tuwe kama Paulo. Who was always knowing that there is a victory prize awaiting him. Ali kwamba alifahamu kuna thawabu inayomsubiri. He was taken to jail. Yeye alifungwa. He survived shipwrecks and perils in Yeye water. Yeye aliponea ma, ma, mawimbi na ajali baharini. He was scourged. Kwamba yeye alipigwa. But he sustained all that because of the vivid picture he had. Kwamba alivumilia hiyo kwa maana ile taswira alikuwa nayo. I am going through the thorough greening in the PhD classes. Na anaendelea na mafunzo yake because I have that vivid picture which I am looking forward to at the day when I finish. And if I'm doing that and it's just worldly earthly affairs. And they really make me joyful and so glad when I attend that class despite all the challenges. How much the more should we be? When we know that we are serving this God and the ultimate prize which we are waiting for is life eternal in him we should be so much zealous and enthusiastic as we serve god therefore let's purpose to be like the apostle paul that even at the end of his journey he was confident to say this kwamba alikuwa na ujasiri wa kusema hii I have fought a good fight. Kwamba nimepiga na vita vizuri. I have finished the race. Kwamba nimemaliza mwendo. I have kept the faith. Kwamba nimeilinda imani. And God is faithful. Kwamba Mungu ni mwaminifu. He has promised to be with us through it all. Kwamba ametuahidi kuwa nasi and to the end of ages. Na mpaka mwisho wa dahari. Therefore as an individual. Hivyo kama mtu binafsi. As a church. Kama kanisa. As a family. Kama familia, Let's purpose to run and finish our race like never before. Mbio zetu vile Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a better hand clap of praise. Wacha tuka, bwana kwa makofi. Let's determine to run this race to the end. Wacha tuka kusudie kupiga hii mbio hadi mwisho. Let's determine to do it like never before. Wacha tukaweze kutazamia kufanya vile hatujawahi. For God is not about to give up on us. Kwa maana Mungu hakatutamaa nasi. Wow, thank you brother Dominic for 
taking time to listen to the Holy Spirit and to just share with us. Asante sana ndugu Dominic kwa kuchukua fursa kusikiliza Roho Mtakatifu na kushiriki nasi. Come on if you can just rise up on your feet. Tusimame kwa miguu yetu ukiweza. Forgive us we've taken much of your time. We are usually out of here by 11, but I believe it was worth it. Hallelujah. Come on how many believe it was worth it? It was worth it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a word in season. What a powerful word. Let's stick to our lane. It's true. The grass is always greener on the other side. And when the grass is greener on the neighbor's porch, it's an indicator that you need to water your own. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't, don't move to your neighbor's house. Water your grass. The, 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 the seasons are all the same. Hallelujah. Let's water our grass by pondering on the word of God and dwelling on it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord make his face shine upon you Amen. and be gracious to you. Amen. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you Amen. and give you peace. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Guys, keep your lane. Let's do this one more time. Amen. God bless you.